Hello and welcome to a let's play of Cybercar. There should be at least an opening scroll to this. Not gonna read it. The gist of it is there's uh, some kind of a corporation developing uh, hybrid creatures of some sort and we are sent in to investigate it to find proof of it and then get the hell out. Illegal research and development in the area of genetic mutations. Newest product, a hybrid animal robot creature escaped from their factory. So we are sent in to investigate. You play the role of a Zodiac agent enlisted to penetrate UCC's heavily protected factory. The building is littered with high technology alarm systems. The guards on duty are both humans and robo robots and possibly the suspected artificial life forms. Your mission is simple. Once inside the building, you must locate the genetic laboratory, recover an embryo, and escape. Now before commencing your mission, you will be given the opportunity to purchase equipment and undergo training in specific skills. Sounds good. Uh, this game is sort of uh, in a special sort of place, or rather was. Uh, when it came out, uh, the typical first-person games didn't really exist. You had first-person views, but you didn't have free movement in a 3D environment. You had like 90 degree angles and gun controllers. They were pretty much the only thing I could think of. This was an attempt to have a more of a free 3D environment where you can play. Uh, and uh, it would function more or less like a shooter. I mean, you have a targeting reticle in the middle of a screen, more or less. You adventure here. The this is also a little bit of a different in another area to my usual games. I I'm not a gamer who wants to play bad games. I, I don't. I want to enjoy the games I play. They don't, they don't have to be amazingly good, but they have to be at least good enough that there's something I can get, some enjoyment I can get out of them. Um, so I don't intentionally go after bad games. Uh, this I have played before, and I've played this before once, and there's a reason I only have played this once, because this is a piece of shit game. There's no way to get around that fact. Uh, you can, this is, I suppose the rating you can give to this game depends on how forgiving you are of the fact that this is pretty much the uh, pioneering games more or less that, that tried to do this. So naturally they're gonna be terrible. But they're still ter terrible. Mm, I also need to talk about some of the things we see here, because this game makes very little sense if you just start it up and start playing. You need to at least read the manual through once. We can choose one of the, I think it's around six characters to play with. Two androids and four humans. Two males, two females. Alright, I played this a little bit to get uh, a little bit used to the user interface and see how this uh, works. And it's a, it's a pain to ask, but I, I think I can still play through the game. It's not that aggravating. Strength, dexterity, endurance, intelligence, movement. Attributes. Uh, I think strength is like... I'm not sure if it even was its carry weight. Maybe a little bit, but it's mostly melee. Dexterity is range, combat, and certain other skills. Endurance is... Uh, well how much you can carry, how quick, uh, how quickly you get tired, that sort of thing. Intelligence affects skills, and only that. It, it doesn't really do anything. Movement is your movement, so it, depending on which character you choose, those change. But they don't really matter too much, I guess. Skills would be... I 
Actually, I don't recall. Combat is pretty much all combat, I think. But weapons is also if you have to repair weapons. Computers is uh, mm, a certain type of uh, equipment to use. More or less, it would be like if you use some med kit. Medical doesn't determine if you're gonna fail or not, it just determines how much you're going to heal. In, in similar ways is how the other skills work. If you have a little bit of a lower value, it's not like you can't do it, it's just you might get a little less out of it or you have to spend more time doing it. So it's not like the difference between success and fail, it's just the difference between doing it better and doing it worse. Um, not sure which we should select. There's one extremely aggravating aspect about this game, but it'll, there's no point really talking about it now. It's uh, I, I can't. I've been thinking about it for a while to see what, try to think of a reason why it's in the game. And I can't come up with a reason why it's in the game. It's uh, well, let's look at our characters. I'm gonna play with a human for one reason. Because I think the androids are draining power as well as energy. <sighs> What's the difference? Yep, I don't want to get into that. But the thing is, there's an additional resource that uh, I'm going to have to deal with, manage, if I pick an android, so I don't want to do it. Also, energy is something I can recover by simply sort of resting. Uh, power is something I need to recharge. Power is as in actual electrical power. Energy is more like uh, energy or fatigue. So with the humans I don't have to deal with the power drain. Uh, I can, certain items might use power, but I, if my power goes to zero, it's not a, that big of a deal. With an android, I think it's pretty much game over. So I, I don't want to deal with that shit. Skill use is the biggest difference. We have a good combat character with high strength and endurance. And sort of similar, a bit better overall I'd say. Intelligence is the highest thing. Uh, weakish on the computers, everything else looks fine. Or, uh, Bit weaker character, but better skills. Um, I sort of want maybe not this uh, highly combat focused character because I want medical up to, but decent strength and endurance, decent combat skills. Seven seven eight eight. This this is okay. Also has good medical, so if I get to take damage, I can heal. Weak on computers, but I'm not sure what that even matters. So weak Allen or Donna Chats. I think I'll take Donna. Right, this is probably the most important choices we get to make in this game. 1200 credits or dollars or whatever gold pieces uh, to buy start equipment. Some equipment pieces you can find during the game. I, I really don't recall too much about the game, so I, I can't rely on my recollection to do anything. It's nice. But there's a couple things that might not be obvious here. Like, what the fuck is the difference between gun 1 and uh, 2, 3, uh, 4 and 5? It's pretty much directly how much damage you do. More importantly, what exactly is the difference between the armors? Armor 1, 2 and 3. They actually look very different. This looks like a... Armor 1 looks like a proper armor, Armor 2 looks like you're butt naked, Armor 3 looks like an armor again, and Armor 4 looks like an armor again. Uh, these are very different. This is like, Armor 1 is like a plate armor. I think the armor is supposed to take damage as you're being shot, so while it protects it gets worse and worse and worse. I'm guessing it might break down and you have to repair it. 
Armor 2 is a reflective armor, so it's very good against ranged attacks, does nothing against physical attacks, uh, like hand to hand combat attacks. Armor 3 is good against hand to hand and ranged attacks, and Armor 4 is by far the best armor. The downside to Armor 4 is that it actually drains your power. So if you use Armor 4, you're basically in the same situation as if you had chosen an Android to play. If you lose your power, you will get captured. Capture is not necessarily an instant game over in this game though, so but it's still a pain in the ass to manage. So I would go with Armor 3, good against everything, but doesn't use power. That's still almost half our points. So what about the rest? We need a decent gun. I'm not taking gun 1. I'm also not sure I want to pay for gun 5. 3 or 4 maybe. Depending on how much uh, excess gear we need to buy. Which comes to the excess gear. Power pack is pretty much how you would think it is. It's a carry of a battery you can carry with you. Generally speaking, you wouldn't want to use these. Uh, there are terminals you can use to recharge your power uh, reserves. Power pack is when you can find that. I think this is more important for those character choices where power going to zero means game over. So this isn't that vital for us. If we find power packs, I'll gladly take them, but I don't think I want to spend the money buying them. Uh, Disruptor is basically a uh, a mine that uh, affects robots only. I'm not sure why they call it Disruptor instead of an EM mine or something, but there you go. Grenade is a grenade. You throw it, it explodes, destroys things. Um, there is one different reason to take these things. While you can shoot things to break them, certain things can be permanently destroyed by exploding them. Uh, I think there are a few spots in this game, for example, that you can uh, disrupt to turn on the lights, but if you explode it, it'll turn the lights off permanently. Stun bomb is a temporary thing, I, I don't think it even affects most uh, enemies. Bomb is a... Uh, the difference between bomb and a grenade is that bomb actually destroys the walls in the game. So you can uh, blast your way to a pool. Fairly expensive, but might be worth getting one. I don't know, I really don't. Lockpick is a... Uh, the game has keypad locks. There's a system where you can sort of get the right... Num it, I, I think it's, they're, they're basically number pass. There's a system where you can find out what the correct numbers are, but you would still have to get the correct sequence of numbers. There are four, four digits that you have to choose. Lockpick would do that automatically, then display the correct code for that door for a while, which you should be writing down, and then it's, I think it's gone. Uh, I'm guessing this is more for people who don't want to play the lockpicking minigame. Or find out the uh, correct key sequence some other way. This is not a necessary thing for us, so I'll, I'll skip it. I don't have that many points. Jetpack, I have no clue. The game is doesn't. It's not like. While this is 3D, it's not like it has a huge height difference. So, jetpacking would mean you're basically floating off the ground, I don't think. I, I don't see why, that, why in hell would anyone buy this, but uh, it's an option at least. Uh, computer, I think it's uh, basically a, it's a map. The game doesn't have a map, so you need to use a power using tool to show a mini map. But without that, and because the graphics are god awful, you will be lost very easily without a computer. So, yeah. Gas mask, it's uh, immunity to gas, basically. That's what it is. I'm not sure if it's worth buying. I have no idea. There's a face mask. Face mask is uh, it's a red, uh, protection against gas damage or gas. Not uh, full immunity. The 
also decided to face mask is that there's a visor that you can use with the face mask, but gas mask prevents the use of a visor. Visor has different vision modes with it, like thermal vision, I think you can see infrared, so there are laser trip wires to certain traps, visor allows you to take them. Uh, also, if you have blown out the lights and everything is dark, you need a visor, otherwise you can't see shit. So, uh, I'll take a visor. <sighs> and the drink. This is energy management. Basically, every second you play, there's an energy counter that comes down. So you have to replenish it. Either by drinking or by resting. And this is the mechanic of the game I don't get, but I don't want to talk about it now because I'm gonna bitch about it throughout the entire playthrough. But this is something we have to get. The positive thing is, I think you get this immediately when you start the game anyway, so there's no point buying this. A refill is a refill for the drink, so you only need one drink container, you can then use refills, so there's no point really buying. If you want to buy something, buy refills, not the drink itself. Uh, Medikit and chemicals work in the same way. Medikit provides the effect to, and the chemicals are used to refill the effect. Uh, or rather, Medikit is the tool to use the chemicals. Medikit provides antidotes for the poison and tranquilizer and stimulants. So if your energy level collapses, basically it automatically provides stimulants so you can keep going. There's a downside to using stimulants though, you permanently suffer endurance loss if you use them too often. I have no idea what too often means. And I'm not sure I want the medi kit. Could be useful, but I don't know. First aid is health restoration for humans. Electronics, I think, is uh, probably the same thing for androids. Bionic arms is more hand-to-hand -hand damage, protection for your arms, bionic legs, movement speed, jump, uh, height, more protection for your legs. Exoskeleton is a shit armor, I have no idea why it's so expensive. Maybe it provides attribute bonuses, but based on the manual, it seemed like it's the, like the worst armor in ever, which makes no sense because it's so expensive. So I have no idea what the exoskeleton is. And we still need to buy a gun. 450. I don't want to pay 450 for the gun. But I think we can go for gun 4. So it should be relatively strong. I do not want to do any hand to hand combat. No, no, no. So we're more or less buying refills and maybe first aid. This is used up when we're fully used up once we use it. And we are gonna get damaged, there's no getting around that. So we'll have to buy at least some first aid. The bigger problem is the energy. Because that's something I'll have to deal with throughout the entire game. And it's a, it's a weird system. You can recover by resting. The problem is, it's not what you think it is. You might think it's like a role-playing game where you rest and camp for 8 hours or Skyrim where you wait for a wait and choose how much you wait and you recover based on your choice. It's not like that. It is literally putting the game on pause and waiting. So the game waiting in real time. And it recovers slowly. Slowly. So. It's basically just walking out from the game for 5 to 10 minutes, so yeah, that's why I, I don't want to rely on that. I certainly don't, well, let's put it this way, I'm not gonna record it. Not even once. Right, that's our point, and back in the game immediately. Right, this is the rest mode. The game goes into a pause, nothing happens and your energy levels recover. It doesn't even show them recovering here. You only get to know how much you recovered when you get back in the game. 
there's a slight lever on the left side hand side where the energy meter is it's probably recovered if I go out of this right absolute bullshit and it's now started trading again right that's why I use the pause menu here to actually talk about what we're seeing because otherwise I'll drain energy basically every time you actually play the game energy will be draining so it's a timer how long you can play the game so here's um, how I'm gonna handle it I'm gonna try to naturally use strings and refills so I can keep playing but what I'm going to do is every time I cut the recording I'll do a I basically rest to get my energy back to full. So the next time we start, I can get started with full energy. So I'm going to basically maybe take more smaller sections to record in general and basically recharge outside the recording so I don't have to actually do anything during the actual gameplay. Right. So the main view screen is pretty self explanatory at the center where the pause is currently but what the hell is the rest we see uh, left hand side the paper doll is our damage it should be black when we're at full health it will start a red bar rising when we get damage I think at halfway point we'll start to lose performance so if your leg gets damaged above 50% it gets reduced speed will be reduced and uh, if your center thrust or head takes full damage it's game over dead on the right hand side is equipment it's basically how much free space or pockets you have for your equipment um, I, this is a uh, I think we have like four empty pockets I'm not sure what it real in reality means because we have two med kits, for example, do they take separate pockets or are they using a singular pocket? I don't know. But yeah, I think it is a particularly stupid way to uh, show the whole person your inventory. But that's the, what the game uses. You, I think you should treat those red bars in the right hand paper doll like inventory slots. I think some slots might be able to stack a few items like med kits but there we more or less have around 13 inventory slots I'd say. Below that is the power indicator that's currently full so once we use certain items it will go down but it shouldn't we have not, nothing that uses it constantly the armor doesn't use it and none of the equipment uses but if we want to use map if we want to recharge our gun it all uses power power can be recharged from every terminal we encounter so it should not be a big problem it might be a problem if we would have taken an android or the power up but since we didn't I don't think power is our big problem it's the energy management um, on the lower left hand we see the card named Jackson Dementia I guess that's the name of the card I guess I don't know what the 29 there means in white on the red background, but the numbers 7, 6, 8, 8, 6 are our attributes. I, I don't think that has any particular use in the game, it's just there for you to see the character you're playing with. Uh, the two black boxes, one of the, the right hand sign which is showing the mid kit, they're your they're not exactly your pockets though are they? the right hand side is what you are carrying in your inventory and what I'm highlighting so I'm gonna move this a little bit so I can go through my pockets through all my items I have still. I can also show the computer top uh, it, on the lower left hand side of the view screen there should be a minimap Right. Shows my location bleeping there and shows the map. And if I want to recharge my energy, I don't think I can actually do it on this one though. Yeah, this is an elevator. I can't do it from here. But usually some kind of interactable thing like this allows you to use the 
power cord to recharge your power. I don't think I can do it now. Pretty sure I'm at... Yeah, I'm at 5 currently. So there's 4, 3, 2, 1, G. Then there's, uh, I think, about 8 sub-levels. So, 14, 15, what? 14 levels. One of them is the genetic slabs with the embryo and then you get access to it. The goal is that is exactly the goal and nothing else. We do not want to explore every level if we don't have to. We don't want to clear it because we can't and then it probably respawn and so forth. So that's something always to keep in mind. And as the game might seem very confusing what we're looking at now, because we're in a small room and there isn't all that much graphical uh, details. So it looks god awful and terrible. But can't do much about that. Also, the center of the screen at the bottom, there's sort of a small battery looking thing. Uh, that's a, more of a indicator if you do an action. Let's say I'm repairing something, it's just the sort of small bar that's now showing at the bottom of that battery will start to rise up and when it's filled up this uh, battery space you have successfully done one attempt to try to do whatever you have tried to do pick something or do something or that sort of thing right enough explanations I think we can take the mini map for now as a uh, standard equipment piece or activate it, we can afford it power wise. We need to locate a terminal to upgrade our security clearance. That's what we need to do at every level, to get access to new levels, to get access to the Hendrix lab, to get access to the embryo and get the thing So we need to find a thingamajig on this level, use it, get back to the elevator and go to another level. Finding a thingamajig, use it, get to a pencil. Right, doesn't look pretty, does it? Camera, want to destroy it. There's a target there. That's a light. Don't care about lights, lights don't hurt you. The gray, uh, gray things on the floor are items, I think. Once we get close to it, it should have a uh, Indicator, right? It's a refill. Picking it up. There's something on the S. Uh, battery. It is damaged because there's a red X. I don't know why. And we are trying to fix it. And we successfully fixed it. Wasn't that amazing? I guess the biggest problem about this game is that it's it is just it is so unpleasant to look at, and everything looks the same. So it's very easy to lost your way here. Without the mini map, uh, I would to be totally screwed. Yeah. Ability to oh, fuck. Apparently being shot at, not sure where from where. It's not like that kind of a combat game. That's the ooh. Not sure what the hell that was. Ceiling spider? Bing. Ooh. I'm just, ooh. I think I'm being attacked by seeding spiders mostly. I don't want to go to sleep, want to you to repair the god uh fuck's sake. Uh.
Where do they come from? Uh, those are lights, they indicate alarms, there's no point shooting at them. Can I repair this thing in peace now? Ah. More importantly, I want to recharge the gun and shooting at it for a while. I don't understand where all the spiders suddenly came from. Got injured in my hand. We also don't want to wait until our energy is at zero, and I mean energy, not the power, because uh, then we're screwed. It's a dead end. Another refill though, so we can uh, drink up, up some energy. I'm gonna have to rest now. We need to reach the red blinking dot. Then we can move on to another level. I think that's a camera, right? Where the hell are these spiders coming from? Okay. Some kind of item in this room. And uh, the terminal. We can at least recharge ourselves. Ah, okay. Enter the card. Update access. Security access 1. Excellent. Power. Taking damage, I'm sure from what? Spiders again? I don't get, yeah, spiders. I don't get what the fuck the spiders are. Where do they come from? What is this? Refill. There's something at the center, or a little bit north of our current location, it has three blue dots, and I have no idea what they are. So I'm gonna go and take a look. I think our time on this level is uh, coming to an end. Yeah, what are these? Hmm, this could be a way to disrupt the power here. No idea what this is. Two things. No idea. I think we're pretty much done with this level. Game has auto aim, so I can't actually. Ma I, I can manually control where I'm aiming. But uh, it automatically locks on the targets. I can just switch between the targets it's locked on to, so it's a, it's a bit of a inconvenient thing to do. Still, it is what it is. Like,
take a quick look here if there's any equipment pieces I might be able to pick up. No. level done. Well, not really done, but we can at least progress to another level. And I think I'll leave things here. In the map. I'm so low on power. So, more or less, I think this is how we're gonna go. We got damaged a little bit, and I, I don't really know from where. The power situation with just a minimap seems to be in control. And, uh, I, I, we went through the basics of things, so, unlike a typical first person shooter, we don't want to go through everything, because there's this constant, this is more of an, do we have enough to get through this endurance game, to get the item and get out? This is not something where we're going... If we go through everything and waste a huge amount of time and energy and power going through everything, it is not going to get easier for us. We're just wasting our resources. This is an endurance game to see that we find and have enough resources to reach the end. So that's why we're going to go for terminals so we can make progress, so we can make progress, so we can make progress. And after about 13, 14 levels, we get the hell out of here. Game completed. Yay, there's going to be an end screen and we're going to be angry because we wasted our time on a questionable quality game. And that's more or less the end of it. But yeah, next time we'll start, I'll be at full energy, more or less in the same condition. And we'll just 